everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and today I am making some of these fun padded journals out of book pages and I wanted to show you how to make these. I'm making these for a fundle that I'm making or I have already made, not sure when this video is going to air, but I thought um, it's a fun and easy concept and I wanted to show you I have a little trick or a tip to make these uh, um, a little uh, kind of fun. All right, so here we go. So basically um, I had this beautiful art book which I love the feel of the the written pages it's a very very cool velvety type feel and it has also has beautiful um, imagery on some of the pages and I wanted to incorporate both but I wanted to thicken it up a little bit to give it a little more um, substance and um, prevent the pages from cracking uh, so here's what I did I'll show you okay so what you do is you take out uh, two of your favorite pages that would be two favorite pages from a book and I have um, a written page. This is just what I happen to pick. You can use anything. Let me just stick it. Okay. Um, written page and a pictorial page. And um, you want to have one side where the writing is the right way up, and the other side. Okay, so this way, and then the other way. You want to have it upside down. So these things are going to show. And just because of the way I did the design. I, my pictures showed up on the inside, but could, you could easily do it the opposite way, but that's the way I wanted to do it. Okay. Um, and also that way, when you peek into the book, the inside is actually into the book, into the pocket. It's actually already decorated for you, which is kind of neat. Okay. So right side up, upside down, facing out both. Okay. So that's that. Now, if you use the same book and you're cutting out of the same book, you um, it's kind of nice because you get the pages are already the same size so that makes it a little easier to make your envelopes and what I decided to stuff the inside of the envelopes with was some junk mail that's right I have these uh oh let's see if I can show you what it was it's like a um, a newspaper like one of these um, you know business observers or something some kind of newspaper -y thing but pretty much most newspapery magazine-y type uh, junk mail will work and I found that the magic number seems to be four pages so if you have four pages that works well let's see do I have four pages yes yes I, oh I think I need to trim this one. Oh, okay a little a little tip um, make when you cut these for the inside make them um, a little bit smaller than whatever you're working with so this is eight and a half by eleven standard copy paper size um, so I'm gonna make these um, either eight or seven and a half by 10 or 10 and a half, just something so it sits inside the border. So it makes things so much easier when you're putting it together. So I'm just going to cut another one of these. So I actually, this is what I cut and, uh, it was just faster to cut that way. So I'm going to go ahead and do this as well. Hold on. Okay. So I did, um, seven and a half by 10 and a half, which happens to be the same size as this, this one. They don't all have to be cut separately. Um, uh, so if they're together, if they have a spine, just leave the spine there. Um, unnecessary to cut it apart. Okay, so what I would recommend is if you have a fold in them, sometimes you want to just kind of get the fold nicely out a little bit, but it, don't worry about it too much. It's not a big deal. You can even turn it over if that's easier or put it underneath and make that the bottom one. There you go. But first thing, I, and I've done this a couple ways already. As you see, I've made a few, so I'm trying to give you my tips as I have them, but I just put a little glue here. And initially, I was taking each individual sheet or two sections of sheets, laying them down, and then I would take the next one wherever it opened. I would also glue this, but I found that step to be unnecessary. So I think if you get that and you get this in place, if everything goes smoothly, now this is going to be upside down. This is where you want to double check, right side up upside down okay okay and if you if you want to glue every page glue every page if you want to paper clip it all together that's fine too but I, I don't think it's totally necessary now you want to line as best as possible and here's a little tip trick um, beyond the padding so flatten it out as, oh, yeah okay see that's it moved <laughs> um, all plans, pans, mice, and men. Okay, so if you find that even though with everything you've done to try and cut your pages the same size, 
They still don't cut actually to the edge because just that's the way they came out of the book. Now is your time to go ahead and just cut them so they are the same uh, size. So hold on. Actually, I'll do it, just do it right here. I'm not going anywhere. Not going. No, I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> okay, so that side looks pretty good. Just line them up as best you can. And because you're going to be folding the paper, there's always going to be some unevenness on the corner. And this will help deal with some of that to begin with. Because remember, paper does not stretch. So you're going to be asking it to stretch because we're creating folds. But it doesn't stretch. But the reason why it's working in this situation is because we're giving it something padded to fold around. And that helps... Um, avoid a sharp, sharp crease where the paper would more likely break. Okay, so now we have to decide, with, okay, this is the first thing, if you're gonna sew, which I recommend with this. You could also do washi tape on the edges if you don't sew, that's another option. Okay, maybe we'll make one of those, depending on the time. I, we might have time to do that, yeah. Okay, so here, I'm just folding up, and this is my random, I'll just tell you, because I know somebody's gonna wanna know. It's about three inches up, that's just what I thought would make a nice size um, envelope. And so now what I want to do is I want to flatten it out straight again, but I know where my fold is, but I want to come along. It actually wasn't necessary to do the fold at that moment, but I want to come along and sew the bottom, okay, of, remember, look at your thing and, and uh, see what, what way, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Yeah, I am doing it wrong. Okay, you want to look at it, okay? This is looking at you right side up because that's going to be the inside of your envelope. And then you're going to fold up from the bottom. And because you put this one on upside down, it is now going to have stuff that's right side up. So it's really important to double check before you commit to securing it in any way, shape, or form that you chose. That funny noise is sunshine moving the garbage can around the room. Yes, because apparently it needs to be moved. So if you hold everything in place and you cross your fingers and your toes, and you can clip it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with giving a little clip. I have not been clipping, but I, I will clip for, uh, it's probably good practice. Um, okay, here we go. Schnurking in. Sneaking in with the, the machine. And, oh yeah, so I don't want to do that yet. So, so this is the, whoop, back up, can't see. The inside lip of my envelope. So I'm gonna open it up, and now I'm going to sew that together. And you could do straight stitch, you could do zigzag. I think I'll do zigzag, okay. Nope, I'm, I'm doing something else, funky. Okay, let's not do that one. I meant to do zigzag, which is four. I'll do a wide one. Okay, here we go. I just figured I'd have a better chance at catching all the pages. It's probably a good idea to do maybe one or two stitches at the back and the front to anchor it in. I forgot, but I'm gonna do it here. Here we go. Now, because I'm not using a uh, the proper bobbin, um, I'm using a metal bobbin, which is sacrilege, apparently. <laughs> and uh, saints are turning over in their graves because I'm doing this. Um, I'm dropping stitches, so that's what you get. But I think it looks kind of cool in some way, shape, or form. So I'm calling that uh, on purpose. Not really, but I get to use up all my threads because, um, you know, I'm going to eventually switch over to the, the plastic bobbins, but I spent hours, I tell you hours, loading my metal bobbins, oh, six months ago. And I, I don't know. I just have this urge, like, I, 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 like, I got to use them. I got to use them. And my machine does clunk along. It's not happy about it, but it does. Uh, what are you chewing on? Oh, look what you've gotten yourself into. Ugh. Would you like to would you like to show us what you have there? No? Is that a piece of fabric? Sunshine? What are you eating? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank goodness you just chew on this stuff and you don't swallow it anymore. Okay, can I, can I have it? Can I have no. Okay. Let, let, let me go handle this. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay. We exchanged for a Cheerio and I got my piece of fabric back. Okay. Um, okay. So at this point, whoops. Um, I have just sewn this together. So that is going to be my lip there. Another technique, um, which I didn't show you here, but I have one. Let me see where I did. It. Oh, this one. Let's see if you can see better here. I, was it this one? Yeah, I actually did. I folded this, this top part, this top part back like that, like we made a little lip. You can see it. See, there's a little lip there. And it just makes an even stronger um, edge to your pocket if you want to do something like that. So um, that's another option. And maybe I'll do that on the next one. But let's just carry on with this process. Here we go. Okay, so now 
There we go. More light on. I don't know. I have a big shadow there. Sorry. Um, I am just going to go around the block. Now I'm going to start with my foot down. The rookie sewer that I am. Lift my. Hold my tails. Lift my needle up. I'm going to do four. Uh, I'm going to do zigzag. Yeah, I guess I'm going to do zigzag. I'm going to make it a wide, like a long zigzag, like long, like long. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's try. Okay. It's so that's number four. So let's see what we got. Probably should have anchored it. I can always put a little glue there if I forgot, which I did. Okay. And now we're rolling and we're just going around the mountain. And now we slightly gingerly turn, make sure everybody's still flat, and we carry on. Oh, something folded over there. That's okay. We just keep going. Yep. Just carry on. And we, we make it as part of the, the look, yes, that this is a primitive, you know, maybe a 10-year-old schoolgirl did this as a home project back in the late 1800s, right? That's what we're passing it off as. <laughs> okay. Or my, my version of what I think that might look like. Now be careful when you're starting to go through the thicker stuff, you might have to slow your needle down. You can also switch to a denim needle or a leather, leather needle, but I am actually working with a universal needle, uh, tempting the gods. I also like to wear my readers while I do this in case for some reason something breaks and a piece of metal flies. Cause, but paper is actually pretty easy for a needle to go through as long as you're not having inordinate amounts of paper. But this is probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sheets. It's going through right now, and it, and it doesn't have any problem doing that, even with the even with the wrong bobbin. Okay, I'm going to back up a little bit. Okay, there we go, and we're off. So we ended where we started, and oh, I don't know if I should do that very well, but. Uh, Okay, here we go. Here we go. We have our little envelope and that was pretty easy. So now remember the paper doesn't want to bend around the corner. It would rather break, but because we have some padding in there, that's going to make it a little friendlier. Super cr crunchy papers won't work well, but if you have some that are still within decent integrity, but you really love the feel of the paper, like this art book, which I do, um, I would take a bone folder and just do this once out to each side to give it the flatness that you want. Now I'm not finished decorating these. I will do more to these, but right now I just wanted to show you the basic construction, but let's make one of these no so and see how that goes. Cause I have not done that. So, and I have extras of these. So let us do it. Let us see where that takes us. Here we go in the land of no so and so, okay. So we have our page, just pick the page that you want to show. That's very pretty. So I'm going to have that face up and down. Okay. So, and then I'm going to put this one, which side do I like better? Maybe this side. So I'm going to put it upside down. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and get some, um, newspaper that will fit. So let's see, let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you could tear this or cut it. This isn't super thick, so I think I'm just going to cut it for simplicity's sake. We'll see how easy that was. That was pretty easy, right? Yep. Okay. And I think I'm going to go 10 and a half, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half is here. So remember that 11 and a half is where like the, um, the original paper is. So anything smaller than that's going to work. And I would give yourself a good inch. Um, cause it always seems to be bigger than you think for some reason. Now just count how many pages you just need to, uh, four. And four seems to be the magic number with newspaper. I don't know why. It just seems to be a comfy, comfy number. Is that right? I got, oh, I got more than that in there. Wait, one, yep. Yeah, wait, no, one, two, three, four. Aha, yeah, five, six. Hiding in there on me. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. Back over here. Open this up. Put a, a string of glue. You could use any glue here. This, this wouldn't matter. An El Cheapo glue stick would be just fine. Four of these putting them in the center would be helpful. Okay. We try for center. We always try this. Is this the guy? That's the guy. Okay. So now I am going to just put some glue here, not actually sewing where the glue is. So that doesn't cause too much of a problem. 
And here I want to see if my pages were the same size because, you know, they may not have come out the same size out of the book. Let's see, how do we do? Okay, there's a little little edge there. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm just going to trim it off. It's not a big deal, but it is when you're... Uh, actually, we're going to... It's not a big deal because we're going to use washi tape. Yes. Okay, here we go. Now, this is what is, this is my inside. This is my inside. That's what I'm looking at. This. So this is right side up. Make sure whatever your inside is looking at you the right way. Now you're going to fold this up. Now make sure your pages don't translate too much. If they do, you go ahead and it's okay to paper clip till everybody comes together as they should. Um, paper clips have to be the most handy, handy crafter tool. Let me tell you, handy crafter tool. All right. Yeah, there you go. And uh, now we're going to fold up. About where we want deciding how much we want to expose there and let's get some washi yeah gotta use up this washi stuff right all right oh we got tons here hang on oh how about this one this one looks good oh maybe we'll go some color Should you do color how about you oh that's a nice one you could use you or you up oh, up oh, where are you going all right no oh, you're pretty now i'm thinking it would probably be now yeah. To reactivate this glue, I should go put it back in the microwave for five seconds and that'll make it extra sticky. But let's see how sticky we actually are. We might be sticky enough. This wasn't maybe not so old. Okay. Tear an edge. Okay. Whoop. No. You know what? I had a little tear. Let me go stick it in the microwave and see if it helps. And um, the reason why I'm making these is because I'd like to put some ephemera or pretty papers or something like that to accompany a journal that might make, um, give somebody some inspiration uh, as what to do. So I think maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna fold it up to see where this is. And I know I want enough width. Well, let me see. So I put mine in for, I think, seven seconds and I put all three in at the same time. So let's see if my glue is better. Seems to be behaving better already. Um, you have to test your own microwave. Some microwaves work differently, so do short bursts initially and just see what you get. Okay. Okay, so let's put this here down. It makes the glue stickier. That's what I want to say. Okay, so we're going to go like that. Now we want to fold it over. Let's try this. Did that work? Yeah, I think it's working. Oops, sort of. Did it work? Yeah, not bad. Okay, there we go. And we just nip off the edges. Sometimes that little trick works. It saves you time, gives you a nice crisp edge. So now we have that. Voila! Very cute, right? Okay, so now we can basically do the same thing all the way around. So let's try that. Do we want to do the same or we want to do different? Maybe, maybe up to here. And then we'll, we'll, no. I'm trying to figure out what's going to happen when I do that there. Let me, let me, let me just figure this out for a sec. Okay, here we go. We can, we can snip it. That's what we can do. Okay, so make sure it's long enough. All right, so let's say we have this. I'm going to put that down on about half of it. Okay, squash it down, flip it over and make it go on the other side. This is a, just an easy way to put some papers together. All right. And then let's clip that off. And let's clip that off. Flush would be nice. Man. Okay. And maybe in here, I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in. Right in there, I want to come in and just, I want to do that. There, now that freed up my edge. So now it's, it's, I've got a bigger pocket. Otherwise I would have been restricted pocket wise. And I don't want to be restricted pocket wise. Sorry. I, now I've opened that up. Okay. All right. Now, now we'll do the other side. What do you think, Sonny? Playing with your bunny now? Okay. That's fine. Okay. Everything has calmed down in the household. Phew. Thank goodness. Okay. So here we go. Just placing it about halfway across everything and then turn it over. And then, whoop, where are you going? Over there. And then over here, we just fold that. A wrinkle or two is okay. It kind of all smushes down. Um, and flush. And flush. 
And now we're going to come in for the little nip, the little snip here. Here it is, snipping to free that. Okay, there we go. Now we have a nice big pocket. And now we're just going to do the top, right? Okay, so let's do the top. What do you want to do it maybe in a matching uh, pink? All right, if you insist, I will do a matching pink. Oh, this is, feels so good to use up some washi tape. Yay. Yay for using up washi tape. Um, until you don't have any washi tape and then it's not so yay. But hey, there's always more washi tape at the store and in China because <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, at at Etsy, AliExpress, eBay, you can get washi tape, Amazon, you know, that kind of stuff. All right, there. So that's kind of cool, right? That's pretty. I actually like that very much. Um, so I don't think it looks less than or anything because it's not sewn. I think it's very pretty. And uh, let's go ahead and fold this to wherever you want to take it. You can make your pocket as big or as small as you want. I think I'm going to choose. The best thing is to line up this edge. Line up that edge and everything else should, should come out nice and flush. And if you use your, where is that? Bone folder. Where are you? Here you are, right where I left you. Right where I left you. And there you go. There you go. All right, flatten it out, flatten it out. Okay, sometimes it doesn't want to flatten all the way, but then you just give it a little nudge and you just say, you're gonna flatten. And uh, if your papers are aligned nicely, you'll get more flatter envelopes. But if they don't, just kind of keep going over them and it'll create a, a what I call the perma wrinkle. But it looks kind of cool in your in this project because it's, it's a little bit wrinkly and crunkly and that's what mail looks like it has this wrinkly crunkly you know look can i better find an envelope here all right of course everything looks perfect you know no it's not like that in real life i can't find it i can't find an envelope right now you know how they have wrinkles they have wrinkles wrinkles of time um but there very easy ready to stuff lots of room decorated on the inside and out and it's padded um Probably not okay to send through the postal mail, but very nice to use for happy mail or gift giving, Christmas gifts. You could load it with recipes or poems or stickers, or um, if you have old or vintage ephemera, you could put it in there. You could put pretty book pages or pieces of pretty scrap paper or, um, or scrapbook paper or cutout images from magazines. I mean, you could just, there's like 101 things that you could put in here and, and decorate these up uh, to go with any lovely gift. So I hope you enjoy this little fun project it was very easy very quick and um so or no so 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 there you go <laughs> so do you have anything to say my love do you have a few words for the the lovely people um okay here we go yes yes hello i'm a little warm it's a little warm in here mom it must be july in florida no it's august oh my gosh it's august oh oh <laughs> okay well okay uh, okay, I'll turn the AC down. Would you be like that? Yes, I would like that very much. Thank you. I'm wearing a fur, co fur coat, for goodness sake. Has anybody noticed I'm wearing a fur coat? And I'm, it's hot in here, Mom. Turn the AC on high, lower, whatever it is. Just make it cold. Okay, I got, I got the message. I got the message. Um, okay, well, there you have it. Um, won't argue with that guy. And... Uh, uh, so, um, thank you very much for everybody who chooses to spend time here at the Old Paper Outpost. And um, I, I am always touched and tickled pink um, to uh, see your guys' comments and uh, very kind words. So thanks so much for that. And um, uh, for those of you who have been around a while, thanks for hanging. And for those of you who are new, welcome aboard. And I'm just going to give you a little info about me and the Paper Outpost in case you, you haven't heard this before, but um, my videos, they come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts, which are audio and new material different from the videos, come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, and you can listen on Apple or Spotify, and it's free to listen to. And I have um, three, I'm in my third year of podcasts there. And um, uh, the topics are all junk journal, paper crafting, life of a crafter, answering crafty questions, and, and such. And uh, uh, I have a free monthly email newsletter. If you don't know about that, join up because you get a free digital image emailed to you every month, as well as a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker, updates from me, and um, a junk journal tip. And... Um, 
Uh, I have a Facebook group. Come on and join the uh, Paper Up Post Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there. We're creating things and uh, showing each other what we're making. And there's weekly and monthly challenges, and it's all fun. And you can do any challenge from an old week or an old month. Just have fun and and uh, um, see what others are making. You're going to find it a great pool of inspiration with friendly people. Uh, so jump on aboard and have some fun with us. And um, I have an Etsy shop where I sell my uh, fundals, which are my uh, old ephemera collections, old papers, uh, ledger papers, digital, um, not digital, um, uh, old postcards and tea cards and, and hand-dyed papers that I have made and hand-dyed book pages and all sorts of really unique and interesting book pages, all sorts of stuff. And it, it comes in a hundred pack and it's hard copy mailed to you. And if I have those available, you'll see the fundal section on the left navigation bar. But if they're not available, then that section is not there. So um, uh, what else? I also sell journals in there when I have them available as well as um, bundles, which are unique collections of different things that I make, and I put, put them in a bundle and sell them, and those are hard copy mailed to you. And then I also sell vintage digital kits or printable downloadable kits or digi kits, as they're called. Basically, they're all the same thing. They're downloadable files that you purchase, and then you print them out at home on your computer's printer, and um, you can just use them any way you like, basically. And um, um, I have an Amazon shop. It's called the Paper Outpost. So if you're looking, if you can't remember what the link is or where to find it, just click on, just type in in Google Amazon Paper Outpost and it'll bring up the link for you. So it's an easy way to find it. If you're looking for any favorite tools or supplies that you see me use all the time, I try and put everything in there. And um, I also have, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And all the links to everything are in the drop down description box below each video. And uh, if you find value here, please like, subscribe, and share, and click on the notification bell. And um, remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. Let's use up our scraps. Take care. Bye bye.